Welcome all to La Vuelta 2022 and a climb to the finish of La Pandera. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Rolla, joined by Christian Vanderbilt inside of 100 miles of racing today to the iconic climb used a few times in the book before to La Pandera. Christian Vanderbilt's uh, been a beautiful stage so far and a very strong breakaway of 10. A very strong breakaway, including Richard Carapaz, who already has a stage win. There he is right there, the gold helmet, the Olympic champion from Ecuador. I think that he has the best chance of winning that today. But yeah, Bob, 10,000 feet of climb and 100 miles of racing, very high speeds. It took about an hour and a half for this breakaway to establish. So it's absolutely full gas from the start. The GC at the start of the day, still led by the Belgian superstar, Remco Avenepoel, with a pretty commanding lead of 2 minutes, 41 seconds over Primoz Roglic. Enric Moss stays in third place, as he's been for the last couple of days. Rodriguez, he's having a great Vuelta. Juan Ayuso, the two young Spaniards joining Enric Moss in a big battle for the podium from the Spanish riders. Kelderman moves into sixth after the breakaway a couple of days ago. The Colombian star Lopez in seventh, Almeida, Polanc, and Teo Gegenhardt rounding out the top ten. The route today includes a brutal climb to the finish. We've seen a number of those, still a few climbs to the finish to go, but a very tough GC day today, that's for sure, Christian. Very hard day here today, Bob. They've already gone up and over the Category 3 climb. They have the Category 2 climb and 1 to Pandera still yet to come. But really, the 2 and 1 are pretty much the same climb. So you put those two together, and it's really 19 kilometers of climbing with a little break right in the middle with the bonus 3, 2, and 1 on the line. Most likely, that's going to be taken out by the breakaway. It's going to be interesting to see if the breakaway is brought back by the Peloton. But all those questions are all going to be answered at the bottom of that Category 2 climb. Two and a half minutes excuse me miles for the breakaway to the finish line and 124 is the advantage so it's going to be touch and go whether or not the breakaway survives to the finish line any of these riders want to go for the stage and the 10 seconds up for grabs these riders might not have a chance for the stage win when not long ago it seemed like for sure they were going to go contest the stage 123 a slim advantage for the four in front yeah they brought back about two minutes and 20 seconds since Robert Hassink got on the front really on the top slopes there, the Category 2 climb. It's getting closer right now, but as these gradients get higher, like I said, I would expect to see Carapaz start putting some work in and maybe trying to throw a couple of attacks here and there, make sure that Luis Leon Sanchez, for example, is nowhere near. Well, if they stay together, Christian, I cannot see them staying off the front before the finish line and being caught by the peloton. That's true, considering that none of the GC riders have attacked yet. It's all been Chris Harper just on the front. So someone like Enrique Mosser, of course, when Primoz Roglic goes, whew, they could take out a lot of time in a, sh in a short amount of distance. 15% gradient. And then a, a little bit easy, but it only eases back to 11 or 10%, Christian, before the steep <laughs> kick to the line at over 15%. It is a quick descent with about... 1,000 meters ago, and they go straight back up to the finish line, and that's where Alejandro Valverde came back and beat Roberto Ross to the line. So even though he was dropped by 15 seconds, those guys ease back too much, and that could be a scenario that happens in the breakaway and the GC riders coming from behind. Filippo Conca rather shockingly managing the tempo of Sanchez and Carapaz. Linares, the town below, is with La Vuelta. Polka dots, 10 points up for grabs. I don't think the breakaway is going to get there, Christian. I think that the GC group right here has too much firepower. It could be right, Bob. I'm really just hoping for Carapaz, for example, to really attack hard here out of this breakaway. And look at the quick step team. Now it's Ben Wilder himself putting on the pressure. That shows that Remco must have confidence in himself. Primos, no teammates now. It's going to be up to Primos Roglic to attack the leader's red jersey if he can do so. He's only got two miles and change before this road ends at the top of Lampandera. That is Thibaut Pino and Lutsenko from the breakaway already dropped. And Thibaut Pino, a long ways from the top, dropped himself. Four Ks, over two miles of climbing left. Enrique Moss was still on the wheel. He's fourth wheel. Miguel Angel Lopez having a good climb from the Astana squad. And Juan Ayuso 
and Joao Almeida look to still be there for UAE. This is Ian Van Vilder making his few last pedal strokes at the front. Here comes Primoz Roglic. Let's see if Roglic doesn't have some legs to attack. There goes Primoz Roglic. With no response from the red jersey, he's still sitting in the saddle. He's just got the legs to easily just bring Primoz back. He has that confidence right now, but he's let him go up the road, it looks like, right now. 15%, but Remco, he's so steady, Bob. He's so strong. Just being able to sit in the saddle doesn't even have to accelerate like Primoz out of the saddle. Primoz Roglic finally putting some pressure on the rider in the red jersey. Remco Avenapol opening up some daylight. That's got to be encouraging to Primoz Roglic, the defending champion of La Vuelta. It's either he doesn't have the legs or he's that confident that he can bring him back and just do his own tempo. For a 22-year-old to have this kind of cycling IQ is incredible here, Bob. But look at the speed, so slow as they're going straight up the side of this mountain, right around 15% gradient. Roglic second in the overall standings, putting pressure on the leader of the overall standings. Breakaway now only 45 seconds ahead, was still a ways to go. Konka finally dropped, and Carapaz trying to stay in front of the charging Remco, a excuse me, Primoz Roglic. Now a little bit just prizing out an advantage every little pedal stroke. Let's see if Remco can't respond. He doesn't want Primoz Roglic to get too far up the mountain. He does have a big lead, but he's now that's got to be the first discouraging moment for Remco Avenapol in this year's Volta. No, that's exactly right. It is the first time that he's been put in this position where he hasn't been able to respond immediately or actually do the suffering himself being out the front. Every climb we've seen thus far with this Welta, it's been Remco on the front, making everyone else hold on to his pace. But right now it's Primos turning the tables on a little bit. And this man on the front here, Carapaz, going for stage victory, but only 34 seconds ahead of Primos Roglic. Finally, Carapaz able to get a little bit of an advantage. Champuzan trying to get back on terms with the Ecuadorian superstar. Carapaz going for stage win number two. But from the field, Primoz Roglic putting the pressure on. Now just 30 seconds behind Richard Carapaz. And Primoz Roglic is coming for the stage win and the time bonus. Wow, this is such an impressive ride here by Primoz. It looks like some riders are starting to attack, and it is Superman Lopez going oh, wow. with Enrique Moss. And look at the red jersey. He's cracked, Bobby. He is cracking. He's got a lot of climbing left. And Superman Lopez on the attack with Enrique Moss chasing Primoz Roglic. Avon pole in big trouble at the moment. Everyone's tasting blood right now, realizing that this man is human after all, and everyone is going all in, and especially Enrique Moss, a rider who really lacks the panache, but has the legs, Bob, and look at how fast he's coming across the gap, coming up to Primoz Roglic. The Spaniard, Enrique Moss, trying to get back on the wheel of Primoz Roglic. Roglic starting to betray a little bit of the effort required on these incredibly steep gradients, but it's so steep, and... Uh, Emco, Rev, Remco Avenapol, that's got to be encouraging to Roglic, no matter how much he's suffering. He's finally put some pressure on the red jersey of Avenapol. He is human after all. We got a race on our hands coming into Madrid now that Remco's on the back foot right now, suffering this bad. And like you said, Bob, it's so encouraging. When you're doing the damage and you know that you're putting time into the red jersey, you're just going all into the finish line. At the moment, Roglic has gotten a 30-second advantage over Remco Avenapol. That might extend to the finish line. There's Roglic in the yellow jersey. Look how steep these gradients are. He's still got the good tempo. When he's riding well, he's always spinning a small gear. About to catch Champuzan. I believe just one rider in front of him between a stage win and the 10 seconds up for grabs. That's got to be the last man standing, Richard Carapaz. Wow, he is just going so good. And like you said, Bob, that high RPM, that is his signature, especially when he's going good and looking at three kilometers to go. He is going to get that little bit of respite when he goes down the hill and then straight back up to the finish line. And just Carapaz, but look at Enrique Moss coming back. Oh, my goodness. Juan Ayuso, a flat tire. No. It's almost impossible on this gradient. And here comes Enrique Moss trying to get back on the wheel of Primoz Roglic with Miguel Angel Lopez. I think Enrique Moss has been riding so strong, he just doesn't know how strong he is, and he's very scared a lot of times to take the opportunities and attack hard. He's always scared to really attack, and he's always lacking that kind of panache. This man, for example, is never scared. He knows he's when he's ever he's given an opportunity, he's going to go for it. But horrible luck, though, by Ayuso getting that flat tire. Miguel Angel Lopez trying to get across to Enrique Moss and Roglic. 
And here is Ayuso, number 174, with a flat tire on a long climb. And what does that got to do to the car? And that is a spare car, excuse oh, me, no. neutral, not even a team bike. So he's on a bicycle that's not fitting him. That couldn't be worse moment to get a flat tire that I've ever seen that I can remember. I hope that he has at least the correct pedal so he at least could clip in. But Ayuso being ahead of the red jersey, being able to take time out of Remco today and now getting a flat tire, horrible luck. Carapaz holding on to a slight advantage over Roglic. So great riding by Carapaz. There's some steep gradients before the finish. And Carapaz and Enrique Moss want those time bonuses and the stage win. And this rider finally showing some vulnerability. He is going backwards. He is already 55 seconds behind this rider, Richard Carapaz. Carapaz trying to hold on for the stage win. Still a long ways to go. And the group with Roglic and Moss just 19 seconds behind the lone leader. Almost 40 seconds now. Difference there from the group of Moss all the way back to the red jersey, and he's falling apart. We said this a couple days ago when he had that crash. Sometimes two days later, you never know how your body's going to respond. And look at Ayuso fighting back on a foreign bike. This is incredible by the teenager coming back from UAE. Neutral support spare bike for Juan Ayuso and catching back onto the wheel of Avenapol. Richard Carapaz still got some work to do. A lot of kilometers you left, two and a half kilometers to go and a slight advantage over a fresher group that's chasing three riders just behind, led by Primoz Roglic and Enrique Moss, second and third in the overall standings to start today behind the red jersey of Avenapol, and they have been joined by the Colombian climber Lopez. Ayuso actually doesn't look so bad on that spare bike, so thankfully it's pretty close to his characteristics on the bike. And look, he's dropping the red jersey on the spare bike, Bob. Ayuso having a good climb. Shampuzan from the breakaway, caught and passed by the chasers. Roglic putting Lopez into a little bit of trouble. Enrique Moss having a spectacular climb as well. He sure is. He hasn't done a lick of work, though. He had to spend a lot of energy just getting across the gap to Primoz Roglic when they realized that the red jersey had nothing left in his legs. Left it a little late, though. But this man right here, he's dying a thousand deaths. He's going to hopefully get some KOM points to the better. Jay Vine still got a massive lead, though, but Richard Carapaz is making his way closer and closer to second place. And Christian, could any rider in this field hold off the chase of Roglic besides this man, Richard Carapaz? No, not usually, Bob. He's such a classy rider. He digs deeper than anyone in the peloton, especially when he's in sniffing distance of the of the finish line. But it, sometimes it doesn't matter. It's what's left in your legs. He's been in the breakaway in the tired of the day. He's been pushing hard. And Primoz Roglic knows how much time he's put into the, the red jersey. Now 45 seconds to the better. Carapaz has taken the fight to the breakaways. Vanquish those riders now taking the fight to the race for the red jersey richard carapaz the fighting spirit on evidence here with a k and a half to go and holding his own against the chasers juan ayuso has dropped even a pole on a spare bike after a flat tire and he is trying to get back on terms with primos roglic and enrique moss looks like he's stabilizing that gap just a little bit better now that it's getting to a little bit shallower gradients towards the top of this hill but it goes straight back up like we were saying quite a few times at 18 percent back to the line May, my biggest question is enrique moss going to start helping primos roglic out here they need to put as much distance as they possibly can into the red jersey the day that he's cracked amazingly carapaz getting a couple of seconds to the better over roglic and moss and miguel angel lopez he's got some very steep gradients and to come before the finish, so it's not a foregone conclusion, but Carapaz oh, looking likely look to hold off the pursuers, and Enrique Moss in trouble now, Christian. Well, there's my question answered. Why Enrique Moss was not helping with the pace setting for with Primoz Roglic just because he didn't have the legs. He had to do that massive acceleration just to get back on terms of Primoz. It looked like he did a little bit too much, and he's blown up. Even a pole starting to regain his composure back onto the wheel of Juan Ayuso. So the red jersey, after some trouble now, holding his own against Primoz Roglic, about 40 seconds behind the Slovenian superstar. Carapaz trying to hold on for the stage win and the 10 points up for grabs in the KOM competition.
It's good to see Remco fighting back just that little bit, but still losing so much time now, about 50 seconds to the better for Roglic now in the general classification. So he'll be within two minutes now, the general going into the Sierra Nevada tomorrow. But the question is, can this man hold off a flying Primoz Roglic behind? 15 seconds now is a disadvantage. Roglic wants those time bonuses of 10 seconds also. Evenepoel now back to the front of Juan Ayuso and trying to limit the damage to Primoz Roglic. One kilometer to go for the lone leader. Nine seconds. Primoz Roglic is chasing Carapaz down. I wouldn't be surprised if Roglic catches him before the finish. These maybe last couple of flat throws before the final kick of 18% might be the, the terrain that... And Lopez now working with Roglic. Carapaz trying to hold off the chase. Oh, it's going to be close. So you have actually a very fast downhill. It's very scary, actually. And then it goes straight back up into those steep pitches that you're just speaking of. Those are the KOM points right there on offer. So Roglic going in the third. So actually, there's a downhill now. So it's going to be right downhill. This is exactly what happened in 2003 with Valverde being off the back, being able to come back on terms with Roberto Ross and actually win the stage. But right now, it looks pretty good for Richard Carapaz to get his second stage win. Catch his breath. One final dash to the line. Nine seconds advantage. Carapaz, this will be a spectacular stage win. Uh, not an easy stage win two days ago, but this one hard fought as any for Richard Carapaz. Looking for stage win number two in La Vuelta. Primoz Roglic trying to chase him down. And these are the last few flat meters. Here comes the last kicker to the line in the last couple of hundred meters. Richard Carapaz has the legs for the win. And Primoz Roglic is coming. Carapaz trying to hold off the pursuit for another stage win. It looks like he's going to take it, though, Bob. These are the steep gradients again to the finish line, but he has enough time in hand. And what a stage victory this is going to be for the Olympic champion, Ecuadorian, two times in this waltz of Richard Carapaz. Carapaz takes the win. Here comes Miguel Angel Lopez with Primoz Roglic. Lopez going to get the next time bonuses, six seconds, but four seconds to Roglic. Start the clock now for the red jersey. Remco Avenepoel for the first time showing some vulnerability. Juan Ayuso on a spare bike having a good climb. He might rue that flat tire he had on the last climb of the day. And this is Joao Almeida coming across the line. And Remco now about to try to get back to these riders. This is Carlos Rodriguez and Enrique Moss completely coming apart on the last few kilometers trying to match Roglic. Unable to do so. These are the other riders between the red jersey and Primoz Roglic. So finally, some good news, news for Roglic. Team and Arnisman coming across. Here comes Avenapol. And this is the time to the leader, Ave Carapaz. I would put that around 48, 49 seconds, Christian. Yep, 48, 49 seconds. That's a lot more time than I ever expected that Primoz Roglic is going to be able to put on. And look at this. Congratulations from Rodriguez, Spanish national champion. To Richard Carapaz, what a stage victory that was. Head of fight, tooth and nail in the closing kilometers. So close, Bob. If any, you, you, you brought up the only man to be able to hold off that deep into a mountaintop top finish would be Richard Carapaz to the line. Tail Kagan coming across, yeah. yeah. Man, losing Big some time, time today. Guess. Wow. Almost two minutes already. Conca coming across. Relato. Stage winner number two, Richard Carapaz. What a defense of his advantage in the closing miles when a big GC battle unfolding behind him. And Avenapol in the red jersey will keep the red jersey, but he did for the first time lose some of his advantage. And if Primoz Roglic is within two minutes after this climb, some hope that the GC is not 100% played out for this Volta. Confirmation of the stage, provisionally anyways, Carapaz, eight seconds over Lopez and Roglic. Big congratulations between Carlos Rodriguez and Richard Carapaz, teammates on INEOS. Wow. 
Uh, that could have gone either way, all the way to the last kilometer, Christian, between the breakaway and the chasing field led by Primoz Roglic. Now he's 149. We got a brand new bike race. Enric Moss closes to 243 behind Avonapol. That is a huge a step in the right direction for Primoz Roglic, Christian. It sure is, especially considering what tomorrow entails. Not as steep gradients, not as good of a climb to attack on, but that high altitude, if Yumbo plays their cards right and really puts some massive pressure on this man yet again at high altitude, anything goes. Stage win, Richard Carapaz, number two. Very similar trophy, profile-wise, Christian, but a much more dramatic climb today, holding off the charge of Roglic and Lopez, the GC contenders just behind him. This guy maybe not as happy on the, the finish line as usual. So much hype surrounding this rider. It's easy to get carried away it is. for the Belgian fans, especially for us as well. Now starting to show some vulnerability. He said before the start of the Vuelta, I want to win a stage and see what I can do. Maybe those words, truer than the hype surrounding Remco Avenipol, first signs of difficulty today, tomorrow is going to be huge. Where are you at with his progress in the Vuelta so far, Christian? The dominant rider or maybe still developing? I, I, he's been the dominant. There's, no one could argue that fact. He's been the dominant rider up until today.